This poem illustrates the first separation of Shams Tabrizi and Rumi. دم گرم سخت دارد که به جادویی و افسون بزند گره برا و ببندد و هوا را. Shams has this fiery breath. He will do everything in his power to trick you not to come back. They were mistreating him, insulting him, so that he leaves the city. Shams is disturbed by this. He goes to Damascus. Rumi is maddened. He doesn't know what to do. He assigns the group to go to Damascus and bring Shams Tabrizi back. بروید ای حریفان بکشید یار ما را به من آورید آخر سنم قریز پا را Friends, bring me my companion Rumi turns to his friends saying to bring me Shams Tabrizi This ghazal seems to be referring to the first time Shams Tabrizi left Rumi You know, in their entire uh, companionship For a short period, in the year 643 Shams Tabrizi left Rumi and went to Damascus. This poem seems to be referring to that time. As to why Shams left Rumi, before Shams came in, Rumi was this esteemed scholar. His father was um, a respected Sufi, and he himself was the imam of a mosque. He was a religious leader. People performed prayers behind him. But after Shams Tabrizi came, everything changed. Shams changed him from the scholar he was to a person maddened by the divine love. And people around him were not happy with this. They had lost their leader. And what they were seeing now was this man wearing strange clothes, acting differently, maddened through Shams Tabrizi, talking about divine love. They wanted their leader back. And they were trying to make it happen by trying to compel Shams Tabrizi to leave. They were mistreating him, insulting him, so that he leaves the city, so that they can get, uh, get their imam back. Shams is disturbed by this. He leaves Konya, which is the present-day Konya city in Turkey, and he, he goes to Damascus. Rumi is now furious. He's maddened even more. The situation has worsened. The companions who thought that after Shams Tabrizi left, they're going to get back their leader even they realized that this plan didn't work. It only deteriorated the situation. So the companions come to him apologizing. And Rumi forms a group led by his son, Sultan Balad, sends them to Damascus to bring Shams Tabrizi back. Shams being treated like royalty, but out of respect for him, Sultan Balad walked the entire path. Shams arrives at Konya. Rumi is happy. He has this euphoria. He has found his companion back again. And this time he doesn't intend to lose him. This poem seems to be referring to uh, the beginning of the time uh, Shams went to Damascus. Rumi says, Oh my friends, go and bring my companion back. Rumi tells Sultan Walad and uh, the other companions to perform sweet songs try to convince Shams to come back to Konya, bring back the moon. This place is dark without him. Rumi tells the companions, if Shams tells you to go back to Konya and I'm right behind you, he's tricking you. Don't believe in what he is saying. Shams has this fiery breath. He will do everything in his power to trick you not to come back. This is not going to be an easy task. He's a tough guy. He can tie the water and stop the wind. Shams does the impossible. He will do everything he can to trick you. Don't fall for that. The Mubaraki Yushadi, Chunegare Mambiayat, Benishin Nizaremi Kontu Ajoyebe Hodoro. چو جمال او به تابت چه بود جمال خوبان که رخ چه آفتابش بکشد چرا خارا When Shams comes back to Konya, when this blessed happening occurs, just stop everything and watch him. Let go of everything and observe the divine wonders in this person. When his face shines, what place is there for the beautiful people around him? His face is like the sun. The most beautiful people are like little lights. They are not even comparable. Rumi is not talking about Shams' appearance. He was a very strict guy. 
at times harsh, with a very sharp tongue, annoying Rumi's companions, taking from them their leader. Rumi is saying that when Shams's inner beauty, his spiritual grandeur, is manifested, there is no place for the physically beautiful people, because real beauty is something from within. Real beauty is much more valuable than the physical beauty. The face of the soul, if I may, is like the sun. And the physical beautiful faces are like little insignificant lights, lights that faint in the brightness of the sun. Rumi is having a self-dialogue here. He tells himself, he tells his heart to go to Yemen and pays his regards to that precious Aqiq, this special stone produced and mined uh, from, from Yemen. This stone is known to have spiritual significance and um, in Islamic hadith tradition, there are lots of narratives emphasizing and recommending Muslims to wear such rings. The ring that I always wear is actually Aqiq. It comes from Yemen. Shams changed Rumi's life so deeply, so profoundly, that his life is empty now. Now that Shams Tabrizi is gone, Rumi feels that his life has no significance anymore. He is appealing to anyone to bring Shams back. There is this great void in his life now, and it cannot be filled with anything or anyone other than his master. Shams is third Rumi from within. There was this inner revolution, inner explosion. He took Rumi from the mere everyday acts of piety and threw him into the ocean of divine love. Rumi witnessed the manifestation of divine names in him. He witnessed the divine image in Shams Tabrizi. It was not something physical. It was a spiritual revolution. Shams was the person who ignited the flames of divine love in Rumi's heart. Just as a preview of the next episode, Rumi says, مرده بودم زنده شدم گریه بودم خنده شدم دولت اشق آمد و من دولت پاینده شدم I was dead Shams revived me Shams was the turning point of Rumi's life and all of a sudden he left him he didn't know what to do he wanted him back at any cost and he had him back but shortly he didn't know that his companions are gonna get jealous again they're going to start bothering Shams and he's going to leave this time forever. We don't know what happened to Shams. The history doesn't even tell us whether Shams died or just traveled to some place unknown and spent the rest of his, his life there. We don't know anything about Shams after that point. In our next episode, we are going to analyze a poem um, about the meeting of Rumi and Shams. One of the initial dialogues that Rumi and Shams had together. At least Rumi told us that they had it. In this poem, Rumi is begging Shams to be his pupil. And Shams is playing hard to get. He says, you have become these people's leader. You have become their sheikh. I wouldn't teach someone like you. I want someone to make him empty of himself so that his spiritual wings grow. If you like the content, please subscribe and like. And if you want to see a detailed examination of Rumi's understanding of love and wine and drunkenness, see this episode.